YouTube, they're preaching on TV. This is Dr. G being interviewed. <laughs> I wanna be famous, I'll probably be an anus Looking for a miscellaneous chick that I can lay with Before I buy a house, I'll probably buy a lawyer Sick to my stomach from all the pressure Paranoia got my ass spinning This word's about to bust <laughs> My name's Dr. G, born in Manchester 1981, a UK hip-hop producer. Started off in 1997 on a pirate radio station named Love Energy 99.7. From there, I went on to work in an, um, a record store in Manchester called Eastern Block. There was a chain of them throughout the UK. That's when um, I got into the world of DJing. I was DJing for, what, five, six years. Um, and from there, I got into promotion as well. Started putting on my own... Um, Nights just basically putting on DJs as, as such, really, no live performances and nothing like that, just like live DJ set. Also working in the record store at the same time, so that was a, you know, a benefit. And then from there, I was meeting people like artists or local from around Manchester, I was meeting people that, you know, rap, sing, all sorts of, sorts of artists, but that was through working in the record store because, you know, people came inside there. Then from, from there, really, uh, watching people do production, produce and stuff. And just, just sit there and watch, really, really have an interest in it. I was just more interested in the DJ inside of things. And then, obviously, with DJing, you can't do it for the rest of your life. Um, DJed, like I say, for like five years, four or five times a week. You know, five times in a week was a good week. And we used to have residencies, like regular spots. Every Thursday to do a place, every Monday to do a place. Um, the craziest thing is as well, first time I ever DJ'd and well not somewhere but the first time I ever DJ'd and got my name on a flyer to an actual event was on February the 20th and that's funny enough that was my birthday. That was when I got my name put on the first ever flyer. Was, that was like wow, spooky on my birthday as well. So kind of got bored of the DJing thing, been doing DJing for years. So like I was saying, I was around people that was in the production and stuff like that. So at this point, I was just sort of watching people doing production. In the meantime, a couple of years, I worked with Sony Street Team. I did like Street Team. I was a Street Team rep, for, for key rep for Manchester. I used to organize events, posters, stickers, you know, promos, free CDs, mixtapes, you know, all different kind of merchandise. I used to give them out at events and organize the events um, up and down the country, really. But um, a lot of it was mainly based in Manchester. Through that as well, I got like mixed in with a nice little, like celebrity circle because obviously the artists that were touring and coming over doing the shows, I was obviously meeting them, meeting the tour manager, meeting the staff, meeting the people behind it. Um, a few of them obviously I was involved with um, Destiny's Child, you know, I, I hosted a night for them. Um, Lauren Hill, TQ at the time, some R&B singer from the West Coast. Um, met crazy people just backstage even from from them events. And then from there, really, it was like, you know, DJing, promotion, doing my own club nights as well. It was kind of like the club scene. I got bored of it and kind of jumped out of the, the club scene. I sort of just thought, what's what's next, really? Where am I putting my energy? And I started to, like, well, started to get into production. Got in with a couple of friends of mine that was already doing the production, you know, messed around with them, learned a few bits from them, and then I back back in the day sort of formed a group with some uh, with some guys and we was you know we was okay and um, I wasn't really a producer I was a rapper believe it or not so well, yeah I was in this group it was called Uncontrolled Dialect at the time and I um, was just really just trying to do stuff with them and um, got into the production and because obviously the rapping side so I started producing some of the tracks that we, we as a group we was rapping on and then from there it just that's where like the production more or less got a little bit more serious like Obviously the group didn't do nothing, we didn't really go anywhere. A lot of us, you know, got in trouble with the law and stuff like that. So, you know, a couple of times in and out of jails, this and that, you know, and it was one of my friends who had the studio and um, so it was his equipment. So, you know, obviously when he's getting arrested or locked up or he's pissed up one night, you know, obviously you can't get in the studio, you can't get into his bedroom, it was a bedroom studio sort of thing. So yeah, finally invest, invested into, into my own stuff. Um, but I 
standard computer setup. Um, few, you know, pieces of software, microphone, you know, just small little standard couple of hundred kind of setup really. And then just used to make the beats, mess with people that already I knew that were sort of rapping, encourage people that weren't rappers and get them involved and get them starting to rap and stuff like that. So yeah, I used to do a lot of lot of tracks with people from my circle and from around the community. Um, Captain, he was one of them. He was one of my homies I grew up with. We um, used to do a lot of stuff back in the day. I've got a friend called Brazen Face. He used to do a lot of stuff as well. Um, a lot of these guys are sort of still rapping, or some of them are not. But yeah, Rhinesville, I don't know where he's gone, but he used to be big in the battling scene as well. But I used to mess mess with Lyrican and Hoodman and them and them times as well. They was doing stuff, and then I used to also do stuff with Wrigley and Liquid as well. They did, um, hit a up squad. Um, sort of in hit him up for like five minutes or something like that, but I never really liked to just put myself in a group or anything like that because it was producer. This is just kind of keep it on my own. Influences could be anything from soul music to prog rock to like 80s funk or you know dance music, even anything really like anything that inspires me musically. Um, it has a sort of touch of nerve in me. I do like my emotional stuff, but also at the same time, yeah, I say inspiration, multiple inspirations. Um, to name a few, like the obvious ones, you know, I grew up listening to Michael Jackson, Bob Marley, they're, they're like the obvious ones when I was a kid, but then obviously as I got older, um, you know, my taste of music started to mature a little bit, so. Obviously, that's when I was into hip hop, so like, you know, the obvious Tupac, Big A, Jay Z, Mob D, Coogee Brat, um, Grave Diggers, Wu Tang, obviously, it was at the time, Dog Pound, you know, Dre, Snoop, Daz, Corrupt, and the West Coast had a real big influence around in, in the 90s as I was sort of getting in, into hip hop. MWA, obviously, Public Enemy, um, Tricor Quest, uh, Leaders of the New School, um, Group Call from Dubious, Lord of the Underground, there was just, just so many Onyx, like, I remember getting my first Onyx tape cassette, and I got it for Christmas, yeah, that, like, that was crazy, because my mum bought me the Bat the Fuck Up album, like, bought it, guys with guns and, on the front cover and stuff, and I got that for a Christmas present, it was crazy, but, um, yeah, you know, influences throughout loads of genres of music but like obviously hip-hop played a major part because you could listen to hip-hop back in the day you could buy yourself an album get go and get an album um, I used to get vinyl obviously but then um, go and get yourself an album and like if it was one of them albums you could listen to all the way through you'd always get them classic tracks where you'd learn a little bit something about the artist that you're listening to you might talk about himself a little bit more or whatever and then you'd get your probably your posse cutways you know there's a couple of features on the tracks and that be in a psychological order hip hop albums and then days it would have like a, a nice break in and a build up and then a plot in the middle and then a nice mellow out ending it and then like album, hip hop albums in the 90s man was ridiculous like Nazis hit it, it was written you know you go back to that I mean we all know Ill Mike was a classic but if you go back it, it was written that, that was shit was like a movie you know there's loads of albums like that um, nowadays music seems a little bit more fun and less uh, Artists that I'm working with at the moment, I'm working with numerous artists from America. I've worked with a lot of Eastern European artists, but my main focus this particular year, um, it's been it's been going on for a, a little bit into last year as well, 2012. But the main thing this year is like American artists because I'm dropping an album called The Coalition, which is basically just all my productions, like a producer album with as many as rappers that I, I can get featured on there. To name a few, I got Cannabis, Inspector Death. Rap, Hellraiser, Shaheem, Shabazz the Disciple, Saint Laz, um, Outlaws, Fatal Insane, Twisted Insane, um, wow, there's a, a load of underground cats that not, not many people have heard of as well, you know, cats that are just breaking through, uh, like Born Ready is about to blow up, Ghost Dog, my boy Chose Matt from um, North Carolina, he's killing the internet game at the moment, Saint Laz obviously. Oh wow, crazy! I got like loads of underground cats from the states as well. Like just just too many to name. But on the particular uh, Coalition album, it's just it, it's just all American artists. So it's kind of like me versus the the, the states. The album should be out early 2014. I'm hoping that we're gonna try and land it on the you know the Mystic 20th of 
Feb- February is our birthday, try and drop it on that particular day. That's what we try and do. Just about to watch our website, drgbeats.com. Um, so, yeah, just get the, the site out there first, and then we've got a couple of videos. We've got a single of uh, Cod and Mike St. Glass. Uh, first of all, it's going to hit World Star. Once you see the single, 